Hi, and welcome to Unprecedented Journey. I'm your host, Jeff Oppenheim, and I thank you for joining me again today, because this is a special day and a special episode. We're already into the month of December now, and of course, kicking the holiday gift-giving off is a day called Giving Tuesday. It's a great day, and it's a day the way I approach it is sort of a gentle and joyous reminder that we should all always give a well, you can fill in your own four-letter word. Oh, and, and by the way, by four-letter word, what I mean is, well, uh, an example. Time, T-I-M-E. Self, S-E-L-F. And of course, one that doesn't even need to be spelled, cash. Cash money. That's always valued by organizations because oftentimes they're strapped for that. But we all have something to give. And it's all of value to nonprofit organizations and causes out there. Think about this. As long as you have a, a roof over your head, a, a warm bed to sleep in, a place to shower, three square a day, and maybe even a little love in your life, well, you know what? The sad part of that is you probably have more than a lot of people around the world. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret that actually giving and I've experienced this again and again personally, but giving is one of the most selfish things you could do. Because when you give, you receive tenfold. Yeah, you know who said that? Mother Teresa. Well, I'm no Mother Teresa, mind you, but I did grow up in an environment with my parents, both being in the performing arts, where they gave. They gave of themselves through performance. They gave of themselves to good causes. They were even out there marching in all sorts of early protests that now are in the history book for most of us. And that was the community I grew up in, this wonderful, rich, bohemian culture, rich in that regard, but maybe not depth of pocket. And yet each and every one of them were actively and wholeheartedly committed to different causes and doing good in the world. So that was sort of my roots, and I wanted to carry that forth with my own kids. And when they were young, at that, how shall I say, delicate age, <laughs> anything but, called tween or pre-teen, you know what I'm talking about. It's a time when kids are, rightly so, exploring the boundaries and pushing hard against both the boundaries and your patience. But it's also a time when, especially kids nowadays, because of digital devices and also kids, especially in 2020, being so confined, they're very insular in their thinking and in their community, if you can even call it a community. And when we hit this stage, their mom and my then wife and I started to figure out, well, what can we do? We didn't have the benefit of having parental support, per se, and in that her parents, she grew up in France, her parents were still back there. I only had my mom left because my father had already passed away, and also, although we were both spiritual in our own way, in our own right, we didn't follow the principles of one doctrine, and therefore we weren't associated with a house of worship, a church, a temple, a mosque, anything. So when you don't have that, you also, I realize, you don't have the community that is both joyous and sometimes haranguing in that community that is church. That wonderful reminder to bring kids up also in that same environment is sometimes a good give back. So what we decided to do was create and expand our community onto ourselves by doing our own community service, not leaving it up to the teachers or to the school or somebody else, no rolling up our sleeves and doing it together in and as a family. Well, one of the first charities that we latched onto was a group called Project Cicero. Now, they're named after, of course, the ancient Roman elder statesman, Mr. Cicero. Good work, dude. But they also really are focused on, well, it's simple, their mission. They go around the better portion of the year collecting books for kids. Books that have either been donated in big bundles and boxes from publishers or booksellers that are overstocked. They also get books from folks like you and me that may be cleaning out our now grown children's bookcase. And of course, they don't want the books anymore. What do you do? You call them up. You arrange to give it to them. Simple and easy way to give, in fact, right there, right? Help you spring clean, <laughs> even in December. But once a year, what this organization does, and here's the beautiful part of it, they take all those books, they set up shop in one of the big ballrooms at one of the big hotels here in New York, and they invite, for the whole weekend, 
folks to come and shop for books for free. Zero. Zero dollars. But here's the catch. It's only open to New York City public school teachers. That's a good idea. Five boroughs, all these teachers arriving at their appointed hour, showing up with suitcases, enormous suitcases, bags, even garbage bags, ready to fill up with books for their classroom. And the teachers, get this, are doing it on their weekend, their days off. That's why you gotta love our teachers. They're there to find the books and the resources that maybe their school budget can't afford them to expand the horizons and the community of their school children. Well, we got to work. My daughter loved it immediately because she suddenly was one of the resident experts. She was busy recommending to teachers, walking them around, recommending books that she had grown up with, that she loved, and that she thought the kids their age, that the teachers were working with, might really enjoy. My son went back and forth between doing that, working closely one-on-one -on -one with different teachers, and also helped me out because I thought the best thing I could do was, well, the teachers are going to shop for they want. Let me take the books off their hands because they're walking around still shopping with a bundle in their hands. And I ran those books for them over to the appointed suitcases, tote bags, and even garbage bags that they were filling up with books to take home. My wife also worked the room and, and worked in different capacities throughout the day. Well, the day turned actually into the weekend because we so enjoyed the first day. We went back for more. And my kids loved it even more because they walked out with a stack of books, their very own, some great new finds, and that was part of their reward, too, for their work. So they were immediately rewarded, and yet at the same time, collectively, we all got the reward of working together as a family to help others. And I have to tell you, their mom and I were elated back then, just so excited by what we had experienced and experienced together. And I've always made that, as I said, my model, including even as someone who makes digital content like this. And part of why I started this channel, right, was to give back, to give perspective, and to bring resource you might not otherwise have as we went into COVID lockdown and quarantine. Well, I also did that for a lot of nonprofits. I changed my whole paradigm in 2016 when we went through, well, what I was pretty convinced, rightly or wrongly, would be a very dark period in this country's leadership. And I wanted to make sure I put some good in the world. So I started working with nonprofits exclusively or for-profit companies that were doing cause-motivated uh, sales campaigns and created some wonderfully rich digital content for these organizations and causes, and also taught them how to use social media to push their messaging out and build capacity and fundraising, of course. I also was invited, and I want to share this little clip with you now, I was invited as a filmmaker by a filmmaker by the name of Robin Leacock. And she was working on a film and had pretty much shot everything when we met called A Passion for Giving, which aired on PBS about nine years ago. And she asked if I'd come on and edit it, and ultimately I also served as a co-producer on the production and saw it all the way through airing nationally. Well, I want to play the trailer for you because I think it will impassion you on this Giving Tuesday and this whole month of giving, really, if we live December right and the rest of the year right. And that is by giving, giving our ourselves, as I said, giving time and giving cash where we can. So I hope you'll enjoy the clip. If you do, please leave a comment in the comment section here on the YouTube channel. It could be for me, it could be for Robin, it could even be from one of the folks you see in the documentary trailer. Please make sure also that you like, subscribe, share, push it out there with us. This is the kind of work we want to do and will continue to do, not only the rest of this year, but into next year. And we want to grow with you. So if you have an organization you're working with or a cause you're working for, let us know about it. Or if you want to get plugged into a cause maybe you learned about today, just ping me here and I'll reach back out to you and make sure to connect the dots. I'd appreciate that in as much as I think we can work together. But I want to play this clip for you now from A Passion for Giving, where you're going to get to meet some of the wonderful philanthropists, and it's from their perspective of why giving is the most natural, beautiful thing to, to do. So why wouldn't you? Until the next time, I'm Jeff Oppenheim for Unprecedented Journey. Please stay safe, stay well, and keep giving.
that, that uh, do you find that people are generous and kind? Yes, they treat me generous and kind. I, I treat everybody like I like to be treated. You know what I mean? My name is Mr. Smiley. I opened the movie. Don't be late. What is the inclination to give that you think lies within? Some Why is it important to give? Okay, give what? We give that whole process. I mean, so it's for us. It's it's a natural. Give some love for you to be here on the face of this earth. You have a purpose and destiny. I mean, the whole thing is to get out of yourself because we're here such a small amount of time in this world. And giving is great because it's your release from being attached to things. It's important to redistribute that wealth. You give love. You can make people happy and you can change somebody's life in this world, you know? It just makes people feel good. Anything is doable, whether you're in Africa, whether you're in Asia. If you want to do something, you can always do it. Well, I like to cook and I like to take care of people. You know, to make sure they're satisfied, especially the seniors, because they're often neglected. Here we take care of them, we feed them well. I had no idea at that time there were 6,500 New Yorkers who needed weekend meals. But we raised $35,000 and 6,000 people had a Christmas dinner who would have had not. Okay, get your fingers out of the way. Just yeah, you can, you can Straight up. There we go. And, and I swear the dogs and the cats, they know it. They know when they've been saved. You know, you feel like you're part of a miracle, kind of, you know? It's... And I know we can make it. I know that we can. A lot of kids in foster care and adoption from 3 to 18 years old, they don't know how to voice what they're going through. Now, if you can adopt, if you can't become a foster parent, you could become a mentor to a child at risk or who doesn't have parents at home. Because think about this, twice a week, maybe once a week, maybe every two weeks, if you could just call that kid and say, yo, is it all right? I can understand what you're going through. It ain't going to be easy. It could make a big difference. That's why I'm here. We can, can, yes, we can, can, why can we get, we want it, yes, we can. Some people need help, they don't get it. With just a little effort, you can help somebody be It gives you such a good feeling. We if we want it, yes we can, can. Oh yes we can, I know we can, can. Yes we can, great gosh almighty, yes we can, I know we can, can. Oh yes we can, I know we can, can. Yes we can, can, I walk in. We if we want it, yes we can, can. Oh yes we can, I know we can, can. Yes we can, great gosh almighty, yes we can, I know we can, can. When you're smiling. Oh, when you smile, and the whole world.